Like a Pokemon whose trainer won't stop pressing B, my favorite Pokemon are constantly evolving. Yeah, you just got similied. Deal with it. Back on point, having most favorite and least favorite Pokemon is a very common occurrence. Whether it's because you shared a special moment with the Pokemon, or it was your first shiny, or it helped you win against a tough battle, I feel like we all put some Pokemon on higher pedestals than others. Of course, this isn't to say that we don't like the other Pokemon, we just don't like them as much? It's like ignoring the children you don't like while properly raising the ones you do. Can I have my parenting license now? Ineptitudes aside, what I'm sharing with you now is my personal 10 favorite Pokemon. Mine. All mine. You aren't allowed to like any of these Pokemon. I call dibs. I, I, I swear, if I hear about you liking any of these, I will sue you. My dad works for Nintendo, so I will come to your house and I will- Number 10. Alright, so starting off is my little Fennec friend, Fennekin. And let me just tell you... Oh my god, he's just the cutest thing ever. I mean, look at those ears. I've always loved foxes. I mean, they're like my favorite animal, especially Fennecs, with their chirping in their ears. And oh my god, I just want to hug him and kiss him and squeeze him until he loves me forever and ever and ever and ever. Oh, oh my god. And that's pretty much it. I love foxes. I love Fennecs. That's why he's number 10 and not, say, Ninetales, Vulpix, Zerua, Zeruark, Brakeson, or Delphox. Though they did put up quite a fight in my head. Maybe next time. Number 9. Zangoose. What is there to say about Zangoose? Well, it's another case of me loving the actual animal it's based on. Mongooses... Mongeese? Mongolians are super badass. They have enough cojones to fight snakes, and they usually win. However, they also don't mind fighting animals way too strong for them. Look at this guy fight those lions! Ah. Oh. Plus, I like that he can breed with his arch enemy Seviper. That just gives me the giggles. See? <laughs> Number 8. Uh-oh, start ringing the inequality bell because I like one gender of Meowstic more than the other. No, but don't ring that bell, please. I don't need to give the CIA another reason to be on my ass. Anyway, Meowstic female. This has nothing to do with gender and all to do about what they can do in battle. Meowstic female is more offensive, while Meowstic male is more support-based. No matter what game I'm playing, whether it's Pokemon or Halo or Borderlands, I am an all-out attacker. I run into the middle of fights and die, just to prove a point of how courageous I am. Meowstic female embodies that need for me. She just looks like a sassy Pokemon who would take off her hand glove thing and smack you with it for dishonoring her family. Also, Esper told me he'd kill me if I didn't put one of his family in this list. But I wasn't supposed to tell you that. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you won't find out. Number 7. Frostlass, the evolution snow runt always needed. Not to say anything bad about Glalie, but he sucks more nuts than a cannibalistic Mr. Peanut. I was just so pleased to see a decent evolution for a Pokemon I felt was underrepresented in Generation 3 that when Frostlass was announced for Generation 4, she instantly became a favorite. Her typing is wonderfully exclusive, the story she's based on is deep and appropriate, and the OB just ties her design together so nicely. <laughs> get get it? Because the sash is... Is like tied around her and hmm. number six. Remember how I said I was an all-out attacker? Yeah, well, I lied. Sometimes I like to hide 30 miles away behind the scope of a sniper rifle. Carbink is my sniper rifle. He makes sure no one can get close to me by throwing up reflex and light screens. And he can also explode in your face if I want him to. Having a carbink is like walking around with a grenade that protects you until you pull the pin, chuck him, and haul ass a safe distance away. A fluffy, rabbit-looking, carbon-based protective grenade. Plus, his name is fun to say. Carbink. Carbink. Bink, 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 bink. Carbink. Ugh, I'm a child. Number 5. At first, I thought a Pokemon just based on cotton was completely stupid. I'll admit it, I reverted to a mindset that found the concept silly, even though Pokemon can literally be anything. Cottony just looked dumb and silly and dumb. Then I saw what he evolved into. I don't remember exactly, but I may have stared at the screen, gasped audibly, and squealed like a little girl who just won a free candy bar. Not even to mention the fact that I use Whimsicott as a defensive supporter like a liar does, I just cannot resist its cuteness. It's a tiny ram with a giant ball of cotton on its back. I mean, I I can't even. I, 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 I need a moment. I, I just, I can't. I, I... Number four. 
Chandelure holds a special place in my heart. When I played through Generation 5 all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, excited to see any and all new Pokemon that stood in my path, I wasn't expecting much from the tiny candle I picked up in the Celestial Tower. Then it evolved into a Lampin, and I was all like... Then I gave it a Dust Stone, and I was all like... To be honest, if inanimate objects evolved in real life, I feel like the Litwick line hit the nail on the head. A candle would want to turn into a lamp, and a lamp would want to turn into a chandelier. He is one of the coolest typings, in my opinion, and a special attack stat could level an entire city if used correctly. Also, one of the few Pokemon where I prefer his normal coloring over his shiny coloring. Black and blue are just so foreboding and fit him perfectly. Number 3. Poor Mawile. He never got any love before Generation 6. Hell, some people are surprised to know he even existed, especially as far back as Generation 3. He was Ruby exclusive, late game rare and emerald, only able to be obtained in Fire Red and Leaf Green through trade, mid game in all of Gen 4, but only with Ruby in the GBA slot of your DS, rare in Soul Silver, and post game in Gen 5 unless you actively did Dream World. No one cared about him and no one knew about him, but I did. I would actively seek him out and try to use him because he just looked so cool. Sure, his stats weren't the best, but my child is brain feigned power because of the giant Venus flytrap affixed to his skull. Nowadays, he has a mega evolution that finally gives him the strength he deserves, as well as a formidable typing of steel and fairy. I'm proud of what he's become. I'm glad that so many people are acknowledging him and giving him the love he needed, even if only for a stupidly powerful mega. Nonetheless, I'll always remember and cherish your old self, Mawile. You may have been just a regular steel type with underwhelming stats, but you were my little secret and my little friend. Number two. It has a freaking scythe on its head. Just look at it. It's a scythe on its head. How is that not the coolest thing ever? Absolutely kick-ass design aside, I've always honestly loved scythes as a weapon. It's what made me give a certain anime a chance when the first trailer showed the main character wielding one. Hell, I even named my shiny Absol Ruby. But that's a tangent. He holds my personal favorite type, Dark, and employs it with massive strength and accuracy. He has the most critical hit-inducing moves, a backstory that portrays him as an unfortunate scapegoat, and a physical prowess that will have you running back to your mother. Sure, he may not be the fastest or the bulkiest, but the raw strength of his moves is enough to cause anyone to second-think what they're going to do competitively or risk losing a Pokemon. His Mega only exacerbated my sheer love for this Pokemon by making him look roughly 100 times more menacing even if the only major addition to him was wings. God, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what else to say. Just, I, just, just look at him. Just look at him and his mega. They're just glorious. And finally, number one. So what is my favorite Pokemon of all time? Is it an old classic like Charizard? What about a competitive monster like Tyranitar? Is it a legendary like Dialga? Unfortunately, no, it is none of those Pokemon. It is a simple Pokemon with a simple design and a simple tactic. Defend. My favorite Pokemon of all time is Umbreon. There's just so much I could say about this creature, but I'll try to restrain. Umbreon is the first Pokemon I fell in love with. All the way back in the year 2000 when I was 9 years old, Silver was the highlight of my year. I enjoyed playing that game more than anything else in my life at that time, even Neopets, which is saying something. I had heard that there were two new types introduced, Steel and Dark. I thought that was pretty neat, and it didn't really affect my view on the game since I hadn't even learned all the other types yet, anyway. I was just playing through and found out that Bill will give you an Eevee if you go visit him in Goldenrod after visiting the Acritique Pokemon Center. I raced back and got the Eevee faster than you can say, well... Eevee. I was concerned though, I had no idea where to get the evolutionary stones. How could I evolve Eevee? I figured they'd be unlocked later, so I just used the Eevee as is. Then one night, I was playing under my covers like a good little boy who should be sleeping when I was told Eevee was evolving. I was confused. Eevee didn't evolve through level up, what was going on? I let it go through because... honestly, who wouldn't? And out popped this cool looking black dog. The design alone made me love it. I nurtured that Umbreon like it was my own, and it was, and it became a powerful ally because nothing could freaking kill it. All the enemy moves just did piddly amounts of damage and I was overjoyed. Even now, I have to actively tell myself to try other evolutions in the new games to play through with different Pokemon. I don't usually end up listening to myself very well, and always end up having an Umbreon in my team to defend against anything. He's also the only Pokemon plushie I currently own sitting next to my bed to defend me in real life should I need it. No one will ever replace him at the top of my list, no matter how hard they try. Umbreon is just my Pokemon persona.
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a great experience to share with you my favorite Pokemon. Now it's your turn. Leave a comment telling me what your favorite Pokemon are and why. Don't forget to like this video to show your support. It helps immensely. And if you're feeling especially generous, go ahead and share this video on Facebook or Twitter. Favorite Pokemon are always a great talking point. If you're new to my videos, hit the subscribe button to get a new video about every week or so. They're a hoot. That's all I have for you guys today, so thank... No? No, no, es Esper, I, I didn't tell them you threatened me. Why why would I... Wait, 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 what are you doing? Es Esper, no, it was a joke. No, no, Esper, no! <laughs>